Hello and welcome back. So to continue, uh, let's log in as a student, right? So log out and log in. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow. Thank you very much. And what's the student name, by the way? Uh, Guy. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And let's put our password there. Yes. Very cool. So let's go to our test. Oh, actually, what I want to look for is the profile before we go to uh, the... Yes, the... 100% answered, blah, blah, blah. We can actually change a few things here. So this is the view that uh, the student sees. If I go to profile and click test, uh, maybe not marked by, let's go back to tests. Oh yeah, so different view altogether. Now this is a view I'm more interested in. So the student here has a view of the tests they have taken but the problem is um, the take this test here is the issue because they're not supposed to take this test when th when the test is here it means they already took the test and uh, they just want to see their results so if i click take this test uh, this one i think there's an issue with the test but let's look at the other ones Take this one and you see here it says uh, this test has been submitted but this test was already marked so because only marked tests appear here so instead of this we should see view so that they can view what they have now if i click on this take this test and just change the controller from take test to uh, marked let's just change that to marked underscore single and press enter okay get this test was not found no problem but uh, let me put the uh, user id there slash guide dude enter and finally i have the results that i want so at least the student will be able to see their result like this so that's what we need so let's go back here and let's go to the profile view of things this be the one right here. So this one loads the marked version of things, right? So that's marked. Very good. This one is tests. Uh -huh. So since it goes to the marked version of things, uh, it should be easy to, uh, to handle because marked is a very specific uh, file. So let's look for it in the includes, I'm guessing. Is it in there or not? It should be an include file, so it should be marked as marked, marked dot include. Okay, there we go. This is the file right here. It has marked by date. Uh, yes, this is the one right here. Then there's the score, and then there's this final part, which has the button. So let's change the button here instead of saying, uh, okay, this is view. Wait, why isn't the view actually showing? Uh, what's going on here? Oh yeah, this is only for lecturers, right? Okay, so that's cool. Uh, marked single. Hmm, very, very strange. This is exactly what I need for the student. So I don't know why I added this here, but no matter. Um, what I can do is just copy all of this. Uh, let's do a copy here and uh, let's see here take this test instead of this uh, take this test because these are marked anyway uh, we should view the information so can take test take this so we really don't need any of this uh, we just need to replace that with this let's see if we are on the right track okay cool so yes, since these are marked, I hope I haven't uh, queued anything here by removing that. Hmm. Mark tests. Hmm. I really hope I haven't queued anything, but just to be sure, you know, it's always an uh, if statement. 
can do justice so let's let's just paste this here and let's add an if statement just in case we have because uh, I'm not really sure uh, what's going on here yeah the thing is everything here is marked and usually the one that takes a test is the student right take test so no I don't think we'll be needing this so just remove this like that and now if I click on these I should go to this which is much much better okay so that has solved that we have the search we can view the results that we want and um, yeah I think things is good so let's go to tests here and see what the student sees uh, they see take this test which is okay in this manner but if they go to their own profile they get to see what tests have been answered and boom good so here they just need to see what tests they are eligible to take uh, but have not taken yet and then a notification there and also we should be able to uh, ex export our tests via pdf if you want that if that's a thing for you then you can export this into an actual pdf so we'll see how to do that and um, finally we're going to add school year so that you can select the school year that you want to view from here and the semester as well so per school year there will be different classes showing and different uh, information that will be showing depending on the school year that you've selected and this current semester okay so and then finally if we have any time left even though we are uh, clocking a huge number of videos in this series we may add school fees but I'm a little bit doubtful that we'll get to that part because looking at the number of videos I don't want to scare people into uh, trying to uh, watch a series with 500 videos something like that so uh, we may do the payment thing in a different series altogether if things go that way but uh, who knows if we finish early uh, then we can do the school fees as well but for now, uh, from uh, printing to, we need to go to printing to PDF and then do the school year thing. And then we can uh, call it a day. We can say, okay, this, this project is done. So to prepare for the PDF thing, we need to download a few things. So we're going to use a plugin called MPDF. Uh, yes, we use MPDF to, uh, to convert to PDF because uh, MPDF is designed exactly for that. So what you do is you search for MPDF like this and then get the github uh, link. Now if you can't find this is github.com mpdf slash mpdf. So click on that and uh, actually have it already loaded. But anyway, there it is. So this is it right here. And it's got instructions on how to install. Now, I did try to uh, download the zip, but it doesn't get all the files for some reason. So don't use this zip download here. It's practically useless. Uh, what you should do instead is use Composer to install it. Now, this may be a little bit um, tricky for people who have never used Composer before, but others will understand those that have used it before. Now, if you haven't used Composer before and you don't have it on your computer, you have to go to getcomposer.org. This is the one here, getcomposer.org. Now, to check if you already have Composer on your system, go to your command line and type composer space dash capital V and press enter. Now, if you don't see a version number, then you haven't got Composer on your system, but fear not, you can always come here, click download. This will take you to this page and you can click uh, Composer setup.exe for Windows. I don't know how it's like for other users or Mac and Linux. I have no idea. Uh, so uh, if you're on Mac and Linux, uh, please just um, check how you can uh, 
install composer if there is a version for your operating system uh, because I really don't know let's see run in the installer composer mm, command line installation so maybe you can do this one I'm not really sure but check the documentation I've only ever used composer on Windows so that's all I know so you click on the setup here and install it so once you install you'll be able to see that and then the next step is to go to the folder that you want to because composer is for downloading these uh, managing these packages so if you want to install a particular package you have to go to that folder now I already did install a package this uh, MP uh, uh, I I didn't do a very good job here okay so the thing is um, if I go to my htdocs XAMPP this is the folder of my project is school so this is where I installed the MP MPDF so usually in this folder there are only two folders there's private and public but now there's vendor and composer JSON and uh, these three actually these are new so these are the files that came with the installation yeah these are good so what do you do to get to this so the first thing is you have to navigate to this folder or any folder that you want to install so you can install this mpdf in any folder it doesn't really matter i chose this uh, because this is the project folder that i'm using but you don't have to put it here because we're going to move it anyway regardless so I'm going to copy the link to this uh, folder and I'm just going to do a change directory to that particular folder like that and then I can run composer here now because I already have this let me just um, type mpdf like that and uh, move all these files these three vendor composer JSON and composer lock into that folder okay that's better that way i won't override what i'm doing and then you can just now go and copy the installation instructions from here which is as simple as uh, where is this oh this is composer sorry uh we have to be on mpd mpdf yes so composer require so keep in mind that you only need to do this if you want to add uh, PDF functionality to your project the ability to export to PDF otherwise you can ignore this whole thing so let me paste that so composer require MPD for MPDF MPDF and I need to press enter now once I press enter to start installing and running stuff but uh, I don't want to do to do that it takes a while and uh, that will slow down my internet it's about uh, what's the size of this thing anyway uh, 92 megabytes so 90 92 so just be prepared for 100 MBs there to be downloaded and once you're done with that uh, that's it then you can keep this um, actually there's no need to keep this it's always better to download a new version because things change every day if you look at this uh, this has been updated five days ago so it's always a good idea when you're running a new project to just install it again because there are updates instead of keeping an old copy that is so once you're done with the installation this is when you have these files that have been gotten here once you have these keep them we're going to use them to run our project uh, here if you look at the github file it shows you the very basic way to use um, mpdf which is very simple so we just copy all of this copy that and let's go to our folder let's create a new file we're just going to call it um, index uh, or let's call it more appropriately create underscore uh, pdf and make sure you remove the .txt and put .php file. It should be a PHP file. And let's open it and paste that data. So this is all it is. Uh, vendor and then hello world and export like this. Okay, pretty cool. But uh, we need to add a few more parameters like uh, font, 
font and uh, which folder to send the PDFs and the like. But for now, this is a good introduction. So let's save that and uh, we'll use it much later in the tutorial. For now, at least we have downloaded what we need. So see you in the next video.